Good evening, dear women. Bezat Hashem, let's bless first. <laughs> and good evening, dear view viewers. I would like to bless Bezat Hashem. She'd get a machine to kill the Rabbi Amen. Amen. So, we are never said. Eliyahu Anavi, Eliyahu Tishbe, Eliyahu Tishbe, Eliyahu Tishbe, Eliyahu Tishbe, Eliyahu I would like to remind you, last week we spoke. Last week. We spoke about the beard, you remember, and I told you that once we are educated as women, once we are educated as women, then Bezrat Hashem, we can help our husbands and sons do the right thing in the, in the eyes of Hashem. So I would like to tell you another thing. I don't know, you remember, it was raining, mamash, uh, the last week. Okay. I hope you drank from the water. I would like to remind you, mi Pesach, Mi Pesach from Passover, Ad Atzeret. Mi Pesach, it's written in the holy books, from Pesach until Atzeret. Atzeret is Shavuot. Mi Pesach Ad Atzeret. Atzeret is Shavuot, dear women. Mi Pesach Ad Atzeret, from Passover to Atzeret. The rains, Hageshem. The rains, dear women, that fall are rains of health. To be healthy, liot bari, to to be cured from sicknesses. So when you see that it's raining, take a big a big container and see that you will drink from it. But not at night. Don't put it at night, because water is not allowed to be disposed at night. Patuach open because then bad spirits are inside it. So you don't leave water. Also at home, you do not leave water without a cover at night, okay? You have to cover it. Don't leave anything that is especially water. Every, yes, close it. So if we do the netila and we put the container next to us and, you know, the natla, yes, the kli, then we cover it with a towel. Just cover the water, don't leave it open. So please remember to drink, dear women, because this is a mamash sgula to get healthy. Why? Why? Because from Pesach until Bezrat Hashem Shavuot, we are counting 49 days, the 50th day, the 50th, 50th gate of wisdom. And this means when the children of Israel went out of Egypt, they were in 49 gates of impurity. And every day that passed, they were cleaned from one gate of impurity and went into a gate of purity. So this is health. This is health spiritually. So you know that we are not sick by the... Uh, physically first, we are sick in the spiritual part first, and then it comes to our body. So in order to heal ourselves, we first need to heal the spiritual side of us. Every sickness comes from here, from the mind. Every sickness comes from the spiritual part. We are born and everything is radum, is like asleep. All the sicknesses are asleep. But then, God forbid, if Hashem wants to knock on our door and we did not understand his knocking, sometimes he knocks very hard. Now, it can be for our merit, it can be for our children's merit, it can be for Klal Israel we are suffering. So we do not know that. Hashem only knows yes. that. So what we need to do, yes? The end of Shavuot or just the beginning of Shavuot? Until Shavuot. Vav Sivan, at Shavuot, until Shavuot. Shavuot is the 50th day, it's the 50th day that we are counting. Okay? The 50th day. So, dear women, that's why we need to ask from Hashem for forgiveness. You remember that we are now in Tomer Dvora. We are, we are in Tomer Dvora, dear women. And in Tomer Dvorah, dear women, we are in the second attribute of Hashem no seven, He who carries our transgressions, our sins. And in order to understand the weight that Hashem truly carries, we study to learn what does it mean to, to, be, to have Avon. What is Avon? What is a sin? And the, you remember we spoke about three sins, three kinds of sins. We spoke about Chet. Avon and Pesha. We, and you remember we spoke about Chet and we said that Chet is a sin that we did not do on purpose. And then Avon is a sin that we did do on purpose. We knew that we are not allowed to do, but we have pleasure from it. And then Pesha, the crime, is a, is a sin that we are doing on purpose. We don't have any pleasure, but we're doing God forbid against, uh, against God, against Hashem. 
We do it on purpose against. So God forbid this is the worst one, dear women. And, we, and then we went to the three uh, deaths of the Jewish court, which is stoning, skila, srefa is burning, hereg is um, beheading, and chenek is suffocation. Okay, those are the four. And we went through the Rambam. And we saw what kinds of sin each one of them, which punishment is for each kind of sin. And we spoke also how did they do it. And you remember I told you that in the Torah it says first the hand of the witness is, is upon the, the person who did the crime, who did the sin. So if we go to Skila, they throw, the two witnesses throw him from a, a big, a tall place. Like four meters, they throw him down. If he did not die, they, take, they have a stone next to them. They throw it on him. If he did not die, then all of the other people that are around, that, that underneath, they throw stones at him until he passes away. This is the way to, in order to fix his soul for what he did. Then, Srefa, burning. You remember there was a scarf to the two witnesses are holding a scarf from both sides of the neck. They push the scarf. He opens his mouth, and they put lead, boiling lead inside his mouth. This is burning. And then Herek, bestowing, uh, not bestowing, beheading. Beheading is they take a sword and just uh, chop off the head of the person. And then Chenek, Chenek is suffocation. Again, they take two scarves, the, uh, the witnesses in both sides they stand, and they just put it around his neck, and they pull it until he suffocates. Dear women, those are the four, the four uh, deaths of Beddin. And I wanted to show you, it says, what are the four deaths of Beddin? It's parallel, dear women, to the four elements that the whole world was created from. And it is ash, fire, water, um, air, and afar, dust, dear women. You see, ash, maim, ruach, ve'afar. How do we know? Because look, the one that is for ash, the fire is the srefa, the burning. Okay? And the one that is, uh, let's go to afar. Afar is the skila. You see the skila? Afar means dust. Dust is parallel to um, stoning a person. This is afar. And then we have ruach. Ruach, dear women, which is air, is parallel to chenek, to suffocation. And then we have water, and water is parallel to herig, to beheading. Why? Because when they beheaded a person's head, then a lot of blood came out. Blood is like water. Because a nefesh nimtzet betoch adam, the lowest part of the soul is inside the blood. That's why, dear women, and this is part of ta'ava. Lust for things and water. You remember we spoke about der sharek dusha v'rabbi chim v'itas chodot again elenu. We spoke about it, dear women. This is parallel to this. Then let's go. Uh, you, uh, somebody asked me over here. So tell me what happens now that we don't have the Sanhedrin. We had full lessons about the Sanhedrin, and we're going to go also, also to Malkot. Malkot is the, when a person deserves hitting, and we'll speak about. We'll see even Eliyahu Navi. Slicha. Whip, can whipping. Even Eliyahu Navi, when he revealed the secret to the Jewish people, he was whipped with wipes, uh, whips, whips of fire, dear women. But we'll speak about it in the next lesson. I would like to remind you just a minute that we are reading Pirkei Avot. This week is the third Pirkei Avot. On Shabbat, usually we sit down. You can read it the whole week and on Shabbat again. Pirkei Avot is all about moral standards, how we should behave in order to be human beings and not to, not to be behemoth, animals. Because you know that we can be, we can look like a human being because all this dressing of a human being depends, uh, depends if we are truly inside our hearts, truly human beings. Because we can be with the dressing of a human being, but we can still be a animal. So, dear women, we have to have the merit to be called Adam, a human being. So, it says in the Gemara, also in Sanhedrin, I'll give you from Ktuvot, but it says also in Sanhedrin, Bektuvot, what happens today that we don't have the Sanhedrin? Amar Rabbi Yosef, Vechen Tani Rabbi Chaya, Miyom Shecharav Bet HaMikdash, from the day that the temple was ruined. 
אף על פי שבטלו סנהדרין, even though there wasn't סנהדרין, ארבע מיתות לא בטלו. Which means the four deaths did not go away from this world until today. Because it, it, all the four deaths, now it's by heaven. ה בטלו, אלא דין ארבע מיתות לא בטלו כי מי שנתחייב סקילה, if a person, because of his sins, and the bed in, in, in heaven judged him, and he was seen that he was accused, and he was found guilty, and now he was, should be stoned, dear women, either falls from a roof, goes on a ladder, falls from a roof, dear women, or chayad or an animal just goes on him, like elephants, I don't know, or a big animal that just doreset him. לא הטקס, ממש דורסת אותו, ממש עולה עליו, דורסת אותו, which means goes, goes up, like you know with a, like a bear or something, dear women, this is with animal, this is סקילה. מי שנתחייב שרפה, he who was found guilty, and for his sins he should be burned, either he falls into a uh, fire, dear women, or נחש מקישו, or a snake bite him. And then Mishan Itchayev Hariga, he was found guilty. And he was, uh, and the death that he was deserved is uh, beheading. Nimsar le malchut lo alenu. Over his sins, he, uh, he, he is um, sent to the government, which means he goes to jail, dear women. Or people come and rob him and, and kill him. Umishan Itchayev Chenek, and he... who is a, a sentence was to be suffocated, either drowns in a pool, or water, in the sea, or mayan, or spring, or, met, or he dies from a sickness that is called sonchoi, which means a sickness that causes you to be, to suff to be suffocated. Velalen, you'll see, if you just pay attention, you'll see that it's true. Ze mamash kacha. You know, sometimes, even though A person, even though a person uh, was judged and it was decided in the court of heaven that he should be, for example, burned. So I can tell you a story. I know a person that on the day of Independence Day of Israel, he was walking in the street. And you know that they usually do mangal. You know the mangal that they do, uh, you know, Sorry, meat and chicken, barbecue. Yes, so he was walking down on, on the pavement. And one of the mirpasot, uh, uh, one of the balconies, thank you, I'm so happy. Now we know that we're all one apart, <laughs> one group. So one of the balconies, they were doing mangal barbecue on it. And I, the mamash Hashem, and he was, when he was underneath, there were so many people that walking over there. The barbecue, the, all the whole thing fell on him. He was burned totally. Oh my God. You, you cannot understand, he was burned from the head to the legs, mamash. And he was in the hospital, and Hashem helped him. You see, this is mercy. This is the schut, the merit of somebody in heaven that he had. Because the Hashem cured him totally. He received another chance in this world. And I know another woman, it was a few months ago. It was also in Israel. But I know here there's more examples, but I don't know about the examples over here, but I didn't, stoning. driving driving on the way in the highway in Israel, and she took her mother to see the grandchildren. There was a truck in front of them. In the truck there were stones, big stones. And I have to tell you that only one stone fell off the truck. And while they're driving, the stone went inside, into the, sh the glass, yes, the glass of the, you know, the glass shield of the car, it went inside, touched only the mother, and she died at the same moment. So, this is also in her marriage. So I want to show you that Hashem, all these four uh, judgments of the court of, of Hashem, 
is truly today gum can just yes Can I say something? yes it was few uh, weeks ago in the news is that uh, you know about sinkholes you are here about sinkholes yes and it happened one of the house in Kansas City uh, during the night one of the bedrooms room uh, there were two brothers living in the same house and one of the brothers uh, bedroom just Oh, went inside the ground. The brother uh, heard uh, his uh, brother heard his uh, voice. He was screaming. He couldn't uh, rescue. Him. He couldn't help him to get. And he just uh, and it uh, suffocated. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, the four the four judgments. It happens many, many places in America. I hear every week. Uh, so this right means now, that we need to repent. This means that we're not doing what God wants us to do, dear women. I was showing my mother today the, this one. My mother is saying, what rabbis are saying about that? This means that we as humanity need to repent to God. It means that we are not doing what God wants us to do. And God shows us. He just speaks, we need, before something worse will happen, we need to repent to Hashem. All of us, not only the Jewish people, but all humanity need to repent. We need to open the Torah, the Bible, to open it and to study what God wants us. What does He want from us? We need to remind ourselves, this is the most important thing, that we are not here forever. That we are not this strong people that you can do whatever we want and there was no uh, um, consequences. consequences, dear women. Dear women, listen very carefully. This is our job. That's why I'm, I'm referring to you. Why? Because, because of righteous women, the children of Israel were saved from Egypt and because of those righteous women, we're going to be saved now. Amazing. So this is Amazing. us that need to change the world. Us women need to change the world. How can we change it? By studying and by having this knowledge and understanding what we are not allowed to do. I'm going to give you an example for the four deaths of Bed Din. And this is a true story that happened. A lot, like a, a hundred years ago, there was a, in Spain a Jewish person who was very rich, Sparadi. And there was a man that usually knew how to you know to to say jokes and make people laugh. So at Melava Malka, he called him to come to his home, and they did Melava Malka, and he told him to help him and just you know to make all the crowd that they will be happy. So he was like a clown, a late son. So he said jokes and said things, and everybody were laughing. Meanwhile, his wife gave a fish on the table, and he was eating the fish, and there was a bone in the fish. And while he was eating, he was suffocated. He was suffocated. They couldn't help him. He died. He didn't know what to do with him. So the rich person said, wow, they will think that we killed him. And it was not on purpose. So what shall we do? So he said, you know what? We have a doctor upstairs. They took him and they put him on the door of the doctor, standing like this, you know, leaning on the door. And they knocked on the door and they ran away. So the doctor opens the door. And he sees a person, and he says to him, tell me, he says, is everything okay? Would please tell me what you need, but he's not speaking back to him. So the doctor wanted to take out his leg. He took out his leg, and his leg touched the leg of the, that person, and together they rolled down the stairs. Both of them fell down the stairs. Both of them hit the head. But this one is dead, and the doctor, he had a, a bruise, but nothing happened to him. And the, his wife went out, and the children, and they said, wow, the person is dead. What shall we do? They will say that you killed him. I don't know what to do. So they took him to the marketplace. They took him to the marketplace in front, <laughs> in front, in front of, in front of a, a store of a tailor, Hayat. In front of the store, they put him in the side because it's, there was a corner over there, so they put him on the side. Meanwhile, the tailor and his helper are working, but then the helper sees that person and says, you know, maybe he, this is a thief. 
Maybe he wants to steal something from you. You know, all of the badim, all of the clothing and everything that you have inside, ma? the material and everything that you have inside, maybe he wants to steal. So he took the ironer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron. Iron. It was, uh, ma? Iron. 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 So he took it out and he's calling and he's calling that person. He says, tell me, if you want to steal something from here, be careful because we will go to fight you. And he doesn't answer. <laughs> He's dead, he doesn't answer. So he got so angry, he threw it on him. He threw it on him, the tailor went and said, what did you do? He fell down, they went to him, wow, he's burned because he threw it on him from the iron. So, and, then, and, he's, and he's dead, so what will they do? So they took him and put him like he's walking. They're holding on both sides and they're putting him in another corner. Oh, oh Meanwhile, it was night. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was night. And there was a drunk person who was walking. He was holding his bottle and he sees this person. Says, tell me, what are you doing here? But he doesn't answer. Oh, tell me, what are you doing here? And he's holding his bottle. He says, why don't you answer me? Who do you think you are? And he took the bottle and he's smacked him on the head. Police came and saw this, and they saw that the person is dead. He killed him because he hit him with the bottle. So they took him, and now there's a decree a few days after that because the judge found him guilty, and he's going to be executed. So there's a decree, and there are papers all over, and they are telling everybody that this person, the son of this, is going to be executed because he killed this and that person. Okay. Meanwhile, the person, the rich person, sees the, hears the decree and sees all the papers outside. He says, wow. He goes to his wife. He says, wife, you have to say that you killed him. You didn't do it on purpose, but you gave him the fish, and he was, uh, choked, uh, choked, uh, and he man. choked from the bone of the fish. You have to, 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 go, to go forward and say that, because otherwise uh, an innocent person will be killed. And you know that he did not kill him, because you killed him with a fish. So, and the, the doctor sees it and he says, "Wow, well, what shall I do? And he says, I have to go. I have to go and admit because then I will have the merit in this next world. Otherwise, I won't have merit in the next world because I know I killed him. I didn't know, but I put my leg and he fell with me down the stairs and he died because of this. And this poor person will be executed because of me because I killed him. And then the tailor sees this and says, no, you, my helper, you have to go forward because otherwise an innocent person is going to be executed and, he, and he's not guilty. You are the one who threw the iron over him. So all of them come in front of the judge, the rich person with his wife, and the doctor and his children are crying, please, and his wife is crying, no, don't do that. didn't do it on purpose. You're not guilty, truly. Everybody comes in front of the judge. And they tell him, each one of them, and everybody tells them. And then they understood that the, this person, Lo'aleinu, Bedin Shalman, at the court in heaven, judged him for four deaths of, of the deaths from heaven, which means stoning dear women, Srefa, dear women. He was stoned, he was burned. He was beheaded by the, uh, by the bottle of the drunken. He was suffocating by the fish, by the bone of the fish. He was burned, dear women, by the iron. And then he was um, stoned by falling from the stairs, dear women. Four depths of heaven. And this is a true story, dear women. So you can see an example. It happens until today. Do not think that Hashem hid himself so we cannot see him, dear women, it does not mean that he is not here. Everything is God and God is everything. Everything has the essence of Hashem in it. Everything that you see around us, even the clothing has the essence. There is not, there's, there isn't any existence to anything in this world without God. Nothing can exist. We will see that when Mashiach will come and when Hashem will reveal His divine presence in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, Me'al Arazetim, Bimra Be'ameinu Amer, over the mountain of olives. Amen. But then we will know, just like the people of, the Jewish people of Egypt, when they went out of Egypt and they saw the divine presence. So then we, oh, the whole world will know. The Jewish people and the whole world. But our mission is, Bemit, to show the world... 
an example of how we worship and work Hashem and how we do His word in this world. If Hashem knocks on our door as individuals and as states, as countries, and, and as a whole world, it means that He's not happy with us. He's not happy with our behavior. He's not happy with the slandering that goes on in the newspapers, television, internet, everything. Hashem is not happy. We are all one family. The original family starts from Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava. We are all one family. We need to remind ourselves this. Otherwise, we come to destruction by our... We are distracting... Uh, destroying. Causing, uh, destroying, destroying. Dis we are destroying our world with our own hands. With our own deeds. Nobody needs to do it for us. We are doing it. And, you know, we're very consistently, because Mamash, we are sliding down. We're not going up, but sliding down. So we need to change ourselves as human beings. And I would like to, now we spoke about the beard and how much it's important, and we spoke about the kippah and how much it's important. Now we're going to the tzitzit and how it's connected to our baskilot. To, uh, to Abba Mitot Bedin, to the four deaths of Bedin. So we'll go first. We'll go first to Rakshniya. I brought a lot of to Sefer Haredim. <laughs> we'll go to Sefer Haredim. And it's written, which means the tzitzit that Hashem commanded us. We say parashat tzitzit twice a day, Bishma Yisroel. We say that, dear women, parashat tzitzit. And this, this parasha was commanded on Chumash Bamidbar, dear women, parashat shlach lecha. After the meraglim came back, we have the commandment to put tzitzit, dear women. V'atzitzit asher tzivanu itbarach, remez lirtsuat hadin. This is a hint to the retsuat, the whip of judgment. This is a tzitzit, the four tzitzit, or the four kanfot that we have, the strings of kanfot. Shalo yomar, Adam, that a person will not say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Rachum, Af al pi shechata lo yanish oto. A person should not say that Hashem has mercy, even though I sinned, Hashem will not punish me. God will not punish me. Arba tzitziyot keneged arba mitot bet din. The four tzitziyot, you know, it's a clothing, a white clothing on us that has four strings from both, eight strings on each side, dear women, and five ksharim. Nuts, five nuts on each one. Eight strings, five nuts. On both, in front, two over here and two in the back, dear women. So it says, those four is against the four deaths of Bedin. Stoning, burning, beheading and suffocation. That's why we have four, in order to remind ourselves that Bedin Shalman Oved, if there's no judgment in this world, there's judgment in the true world, dear women. Don't think that if nothing happened to us, it doesn't, and we did something not in the will of Hashem, that nothing will happen. Adif, it's better when we have a flick over here in this world than in the next world. It's better that we are judged here and instead of the next world, dear women. You remember that the children of Israel went through the sea. You remember the sea was open for them, they went through. The angel Gabriel, the angel J Gabriel was walking in front of them. And the water wanted to cover them. Be I already gave a lesson over here to explain to you why. Because the ocean wanted to cover them because they were found guilty in selling Yosef. You remember his brothers sold Yosef to the Midianim, the Midianim to Ishmaelim, the Ishmaelim to Mitzrayim, to Egypt. So because they sold Yosef, you remember we spoke about what happened in suffocation, what kind of sins. A person who, who sells another person, dear women, his judgment is chenek, suffocation. So because of that, they were deserving to go into the ocean and be, and be drowned. But Hashem forgave them for all of their sins because of, in the merit of the f three forefathers and in the merit of all the tribes. So the water wanted to cover them. That's why they had to go through the water. Hashem could have taken them on the clouds of glory above the water, but they had to go in because this is part of Abba Mitot Bedin. That's what I'm telling you. And then Hashem had mercy upon us because that's why they had to go through the water. And the angel Gabriel 
was walking in front of them and he was telling the water because any minute the water wanted to close on them and it opened like a zipper a little by little and the angel Gabriel said to the water the water on the right side of the children of Israel beware of the children of Israel that are going to receive the Torah on the mountain of Sinai on their right side and then he said, beware to the waters on the left side. He said, beware of the children of Israel that are going to put that filin on their left hand. And then he said to the water that was in front of them, beware of the children of Israel that they are going to circumcise themselves. And he said to the water that were in the back, he said, beware of the children of Israel that you're going to see the strings of the tzitzit and that filin. The strings of the tzitzit and that feeling, dear women. So let's go back to the tzitzit. So our tzitzit, or the four string, the four, I can't call it, you know, when I, I say confort, I mean the strings, okay? The four confort. Neged arba mitot bedin is parallel to the four uh, death judgments of bedin. And even though there's no Sanhedrin today, Hashem huidbach ma'anish dugmat arba mitot ba'olam hazeh. Lo alenu, if a person deserves, he is punished by the four deaths of the Sanhedrin. Ve'gam ha'arba tzitziyot remez le'arba shvata v'raim ha'amurim b'sefer yechazkel. Cherev ve'ra'a ve'chaya ra'a ve'dever. Those four arba kanfot of the tzitzit is parallel. How much more when I send all of my four evil judgments Listen, sword, which means wars, hunger. And you can see it. Look what happens in the world. A furious beast, animals, dear women, and p um, pestilence, which means harakim, uh, ken, dear women, dever. And the eight strings that you see in each one of them is to make the person awake. Awake, awake, sleepy people, to see it in, to, in order to remind ourselves that Hashem is here and He judges us and we should listen to His word and, should, and we should do it out of the fear, respect to Hashem and love to Hashem and human beings, dear women. And it's written, in order to look at it and we'll not have one of the, set of the four judgments of Bed Din, of the court, the Jewish court. And it's, if he didn't, if he did only bad things in the eyes of Hashem, of God, and he wasn't punished in this world, he will be punished in the next world. And this is for eternity. Here, it's temporary punishment, but in the next world, it's for eternity. This is the false world. The true world is on the other side. This world is very important because this is the world of action. What we cannot do on the other side. On the other side, you cannot do anything anymore. Because it means, the King David says on chapter 88 in Tehillim, when you are dead, you are free of all the mitzvot, all the commandments. You cannot do anything anymore. You want to do, but you cannot do. The soul, once it goes out of the body and understands what's waiting for her on the other side, it wants to go back. That's why for a whole year, we, we, the whole year is for the, us in order to help the person that passed away. And every Rosh Chodesh, the soul wants to go inside the body, to wake up the body in order to do a mitzvah, because then only then it understands the merit of the mitzvah. It says about the Gaon Mevilna. The Gaon Mevilna, before he passed away, it was Sukkot. It was Chola Moed Sukkot. And before he passed away, he was very weak already. And he took the confort of tzitzit and he was holding in his hand and he, it started crying. And he said, look, this mitzvah that does not cost a lot of money. And it's like an underwear, like you take. I can see men that dress up with, the, you know, the white underwear, uh, agufia. So white underwear beneath. And I say to them, why don't you take the tzitzit? It's the same thing. And you have all the mitzvot around you. And they said, no, it's, it, it's too much. We cannot put it. But dear women, listen. The tzitzit protects a person. He who puts the tzitzit is like he did all the tariyag mitzvot, all the 613 commandments. Mitzvot, dear women. Tariyag. 600. How do we know that? Because tzitzit, you see, 
Tzadik is 90 numerical value, Yud is 10, another Tzadik is 90, another Yud is 10, and then Taf is 400. How much is it together? 600, you see it? Tzitzit is 600 in numerical value. And then we have eight strings in each part, eight strings, okay, Shmona Chutim, and then we have five Ksharim, five knots, okay? How much is it together? 613. He who puts a tzitzit is like he did all of the commandments. Like did all of the commandments, dear women. And he says over here, eight, there's eight strings. Each side had eight strings. And at eight strings, you see five knots on. You have to count five to see that it's kosher tzitzit. Okay, dear women? Each one of them. So look. Eight plus five, eight strings and five knots is 13. The 13 attributes of Hashem. 13 is the 13 attributes of Hashem, dear women. You see it? That we are studying now the second attribute of Hashem. It's written, Hashem told us to make one of them, seven of them will be white. One of them should be tchelet, like blue, but you know, light blue. And you know, this blue is from a fish that is a uh, chilazon, uh, from a fish that is in the sea, and once in 70 years it goes out. This is a special blue, dear women. So one string should be blue. Did you see uh, tzitzit with one blue? You yeah. saw it? Yeah. Yeah, it? My brother brought me from Israel. He brought from my son. Tzitzit that you have seven strings that are white and one is blue, dear women. But they are doing from the blue leg fish. Yes. So, Lavan, sheva medurot esh The seven, sh seven strings that are white is in order to remind us of the seven fires that, in he that are in hell, dear women. Vashminit chelet, and the, the blue one is to remind us of the destructive angel that is memune uh, al geinom, that he is the memune memune appointed on the hell, dear women. So that, that one that is tchelet is to remind us that for, that's why the Kohen Gadol has also tchelet. In his, in his clothing, he has tchelet, dear women. There's a big secret about it. And, it con and it's connected, once maybe I'll give it to you, it's connected to chapter 23 in Tehillim. I won't go into it now, but it's a big secret, the word tchelet, dear women. So, and, uh, and beneath him, there are thousands and, and t ten thousands of angels of destruction that, make, that causes a lot of suffers to people or to souls that, need, that go to hell, dear women. And it says, Dear women, if we look at this, we have eight strings on each, we have eight strings, on each part. So eight multiplied by, um, four. by four is 32, dear women. 32. And then if we, there are four corners plus four, it's 36. Lamed Vav Tzadikim. Helps us to be Tzadikim. Lamed Vav, 36 righteous people. But what is 32? 32 is in order to remind us, dear women, because it's Lamed Bet. Lamed Bet is a heart, Lev. Lamed is 30, numerical value. Bet is 2, it's 32. 32 in order to remind us the whole Torah, because the Torah starts in Bereshit, and it ends, the Torah starts with Bereshit, and it ends, in the beginning, it ends. Lenei kol Yisrael, Yisrael. So look, the last letter in the Torah is Lamed, and the first letter is bet, is a heart. This is the heart of the, of the whole world. This is the heart. This, the Torah is the heart of the children of Israel. But it's the heart of the whole world. Because without the Torah, without the children of Israel, studying the Torah, there won't be a world. Every, everything goes back to chaos. But you see it by multiplying the eight strings, multiplied by four, this is Lamed Pev, the heart, Lev, to remind us. You see it over here? And then if we add... The knots, uh, so we have on each one five knots, we have four corners, five multiplied by four is 20. So 20 plus 32, the, the strings, okay, the 32 strings is 52. 52 is the name of Hashem, 
Ben. When we fill in Yud Kei Vav Kei, the name of mercy of Hashem, when we fill it in with letters, it adds up to Ben. Ben, in numerical value, is Eliyahu Anavi. Eliyahu. So he who puts it, it, not only is considered like he did all of the mitzvot, all the 313 commandments of Bochaba, or not only this, but the, his heart is awakened in order to do tshuva, dear women, to do tshuva to Hashem, and the whole Torah is surrounding him. This is called an external light. Just like we sit in the sukkah, in the sukkah, dear women, it's an external light, or Mekif. And you know the Zohar Kadosh says that when we have or Mekif around us, no evil angel can touch us. Nothing bad can touch us. This is why we're surrounded with or Mekif. This is all Mekif, dear women. This is a light that is, there's or Pnimi and or Mekif. Like the, when we eat the matzah, this is or Pnimi. It's an internal light that helps us from sinning, that protects us. But the external light is like the sukkah. We sit in the sukkah, this is an external light. We, in Shabbat, we are, this is the, the mitzvah of Shabbat, we don't need to do anything. Once Shabbat gets in, the time is for Shabbat to light the candles, we are already with external light that protects us. So we can see that this seat, seat gives us external light, dear women. And look, if we look, dear women, at the tzitzit, in, because you know when the men bless over the tzitzit, so they hold it in their hands, and they see the five knots and the other five knots. Five plus five is ten. Ten is the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. the ten, not only the Ten Commandments, but it's also the ten speeches that Hashem created the world with. This is the ten counts of the Kabbalah, the ten. So it reminds a human being not to sin, dear women. It reminds us not to do things that are not in the will of Hashem. Furthermore, dear women, I'm going to... Five knots is plus five strings, you said? Five, uh, five and five knots. We have eight strings, but five knots in each one. When we put it here, to finish it, there are five knots on each one. There are eight knots, but there are five knots. How do you know that it's a knot? How do you know that it's a knot? There are five knots on each one. Yes, on each corner, eight strings have, on each one of them, five knots. Okay? Can you explain 52 again? 52. Uh, 52, dear women, is when we take the eight strings multiplied by four, because each side has eight strings, so it's 32. Then we have four corners, so plus four, it's 36. Oh, you wanted the 52. So 30, 32, then we add the five knots on each one of them, so 32 plus 20, because five multiplied by four is 52. 52 is numerical value of Ben, because Bet is two, and Nun is 50. It's 52. This is the name of Bemiluyotiot, the name of God of mercy, Yud Kei Vav Kei, Bemiluyotiot. And this is parallel to the, to the uh, Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu is also 52, because Aleph is 1, Lamed is 30, Yud is 10, He is 5, and Vav is 6. Together, dear women, it's 52. Eliyahu Navi. So Eliyahu comes to protect us. Eliyahu Navi, Tzachot Amen. Amen. כן. 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 Okay, you see, these are the eight strings. You see it? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. At Raize? Yeah. At Raize, it's Sigi at Raize, she wrote the At Raize? Okay, these on each corner, you can see it on the talit. You see one, eight strings on each side. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Why eight? It's about nature. Eight is like eyes. That is Eight, look, is this is eight. You see eight? Yeah. These are eyes. In order to keep our eyes, remind me to tell you a story about this. In order to keep our eyes clean, not to see bad things. You see over here, this is eight. It's above nature. Seven is the seven days that Hashem created the world. But eight is above nature. So you see now, <laughs> now we count five nuts. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, dear women, you see it? One, two, three, four, five, five nuts and eight strings, dear women. Each corner should have. The talit has and the tzitzit. Now, you can see when the men come to shul, they, they pray, they bless over Lilvosh, Litatef Betzitzit. They bless Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam, Shagshan Mtzotav Et Sivanu, Litatef Betzitzit. I'll write it over here. Litatef Betzitzit. Again, Litatef Betzitzit. I would like to show you, even in the blessing, our sages put the Lamed and the Bet, Lev. So we will know, you see, Lev, heart, Lamed and Bet. So we will remember that this is the Bet, the beginning of the Torah, that it, it mama surrounds the man who, and then he comes with this good energy around his children, his wife, everything. He protects everybody with this. Hashem, it's like, you know, uh, it's like we are connecting on the radio. There was a rabbi who said, I'll give you an example of what does it mean to put feeling in and to uh, dress up with tzitzit. It's like I'm opening a radio. So what happens? There are vibrations in the air. Nachon teder. Nachon teder. Vibes. Okay, vibes in the air that come and then you can listen to a voice from the radio. So when we put the tzitzit and when we put the tefillin, the tefillin is in order to protect our heart, mm. so our heart won't want to go to things that we are not allowed, and that uh, and the tefillin of the head is in order to clean our thoughts, so our thoughts will be connected to Hashem all the time. It's the same thing, like putting an antenna yes. to be connected to Hashem. Mamash, we cannot see it. If we had the permission to see it, Nobody would, would choose to do the, the wrong thing. Everybody will do exactly what Hashem wants them to do. And if we had the chance to see it, we wouldn't have freedom of choice anymore. We couldn't choose not to do what God tells us to do. Because we'll know what will happen. We'll understand. So that, this doesn't limit the freedom of choice. Which means because we cannot see the spiritual world, which is all around us. Which is not, we cannot see it. Because of that, dear women, th then people think that they, are, they, don't, they don't have to put tzitzit. We have to put tzitzit because it's one of the commandments. We should, uh, we should also tell our sons and our husbands to look at the kanfot tzitzit and to understand the meaning that is beyond this. It says the Mishnah Bruwa, dear women. It says the Mishnah, oh, I wanted to say something about, it says the Parashat Shlach Lecha, it says, and you should see him, and 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 you will remember all the mitzvot of Hashem. So that tzitzit helps us to have memory, which means we have memory with the tzitzit. The tzitzit helps us not to lose the memory. Another thing, pay attention, uritem riya to clean our sight, not to see things that we're not supposed to see. Shh. It's important, look. Why, why does it, why, nobody asked me over here, why isn't it written and veritem otam, otam, and you shall see them, because we look at the confotzitzit on the strings of the tzitzit. Why is it written veritem otam, but it's written veritem oto, and you shall see him. Kidai lachem, kidai lishmoa, dear women, because we're going to speak about it in a few minutes from the Gemara. It means that by putting the tzitzit, you can meet Shekhinah, the divine presence. 
That's why Otto, this is what it's written. So Gaon Mevilda was crying and said, with a simple mitzvah of tzitzit, when I'm looking and back and forth, I will see the shechina. I will have the merit to see the shechina. And now that I pass from this world, I will pass, then I don't have the merit of this mitzvah anymore. It's not Otam that can fought. What is important, Veritem Otto, who the divine presence, the shechina, do you understand the meaning, how it's deep? And then, uzchartem. And by now, because there's no, there's no forgetting anything under the throne of Hashem. So once, kol tov neshama. So once, dear women, that we look at the tzitzit, at the, at the confort and the strings of the tzitzit, <coughs> we be'etzem have the merit, dear women, to see the shechina. That the shechina will be around us. That's a big merit. And we have the merit to remember at kol mitzvot Hashem. The, all the commandments, Hashem will not cause us lipol to fall down with our sin. This is only when we put the tzitzit and we have a meaning to put It's not like we're, it's part of our clothing and we don't look at it truly by, with our spiritual part, you understand, with our soul. This is when we have a meaning to the tzitzit. Furthermore, dear women, it's written in um, uh, it's written by the Chafetz Chaim, dear women, the Mishnah Brura, dear women. It's written like this: Yesh no agin li istakel b'tzitzit shemagiim leuritem oto. When they look at the tzitzit, when we come to the part where they ritem oto, uminhag yafehu bechaviv mitzvah ala enaim, which means it's very important for the eyes to take. That sit, sit, and to pull and to put it above the eyes, just to move it on the eyes. Ken, velena shek, and to kiss it. Why? Beshem akadmonim, kol hamavir tzitzit alenav. He who takes the kanfot tzitzit and puts it on his eyes like this, passes it through the eyes. Kshekore parashat tzitzit, when he reads parashat tzitzit in Shema Yisroel, muftach shelo yavol lidei simu yenaim. It's promised that he won't be blind. That is, he won't lose his sight. Taru lachem what a big mitzvah it is. To take the arba kanfot, both arba kanfot, just to pass it up through your eyes like this. This is a big mitzvah. When you reach my soul and you come to the part of the tzitzit, it's the third part, it's three paragraphs. This is the th third paragraph, dear women. That this is a merit not to lose the eyesight, dear women. <laughs> רק גברים, dear women. Dear women, כשמסתכל בציצית, מסתכל בשתי ציציות שלפניו שיש בהם עשרה קשרים. When he looks at the ציצית, he looks at the two ציציות, the two ones that are over here, together it's ten קשרים. Because we have five knots on each one, plus another five, it's ten knots, dear women. And this is a hint for the name of Hashem, Yud K Vav K. Because Yud K Vav K, when you write the letters, it's ten letters. It adds up to ten letters. Because Yud is three letters. Yud, Yud Vav Dalit. It's three letters. And then the He, I don't want to write it because I don't want to wipe it. The He, you have two letters. He is the letter He and the letter Aleph. Two letters. Together it's five. And then we have Vav. Vav is three letters. Vav, the letter Aleph, and the letter Vav. Nachon, three letters. And then we have the last He, two letters. Together it's ten letters. So ten knots for ten letters of the name of Hashem. And then, dear women, and then we have for the, from... And, uh, how many numbers of uh, strings we have? We have eight on each side. Together, it's 16. 16 plus 10 is 26. Yud, K, Vav, K, Shem, Hashem, Aleh. 26 is the name of Hashem of mercy. Look for how much uh, merit does it have. So let's continue. The it says more than that. Furthermore, Gadol, Onesh, Amvatel, Mitzvah, Tzitzit. The one who does not, does not keep the mitzvah of tzitzit, his punishment is severe. Ve'alav ne'emar lechos bekanfei aretz. It's like he is ruining the whole world. He is zahir b'mitzvah tzitzit. Azahir slicha b'mitzvah tzitzit. He who is careful with the mitzvah of tzitzit, zoche ve'roe p'nei shechina. Has the merit. It says... It says, dear women, we should lelamet ktanim. We should give small, even a baby, if we have a small tzitzit, yeah. put on him the tzitzit. 
אוקיי? לא את הבייבי דאטה, זה לא טוב, לא אחד שמלכלך את עצמו הרבה, אבל ילד כבר שיכול, כבר קצת נקי, אפשר לשים עליו ציצית. למה להרגיל אותו? The children are like ספוג, ספאנג'. Like a sponge, whatever we teach them when they are young, it goes with them when they are older. Everything, even if afterwards they, they left and they didn't want to do it, you will see once they get married, they will do exactly what they saw at home. It's just like the sponge that you take, you know, fill it with water, and then when you squeeze it, all the water goes out. It's the same thing. They are filled, their soul is filled. So don't be depressed or, or sad if you see that your children that not always go in the way that you taught them because daven for them and you will see that they will go back in the right path. Everything that you taught them, you will see it will come back. You just need Hashem wants our davening. We need to daven because today it's very hard. You know, a, a wise person told me a, a beautiful uh, story about the Chafetz Chaim. There was a person who came to the Chafetz Chaim and he said, Please, I don't have children. Please pray for me for children. So the Chafetz Chaim was blessing him that he will have good parnasa and health and everything except children. So he tells him, a Chafetz Chaim, he says, Rabbi, he says, please, I, I ask you to bless me for children. I don't have children. He says, are you sure that you want a child? He says, yes. He says, why do you want a child? And he was astonished. Why does the Chafetz, isn't that obvious why I want a child? He says, I keep the commandments, I keep the mitzvot. I want a, a, a son that will continue after me and say Kaddish and will keep the mitzvot. He says, He says, the apple does not fall uh, away from the tree, but near the tree. He said, the Chafetz Chaim told him, in this generation, there are strong winds and they can take the apple very far from wow. the tree. So this generation is the new generation of Mashiach. It's very sad, but it's true. This is the generation of Mashiach. And what Hashem wants from us is the davening, the prayers to Hashem, is to pray to Him. It's truly from our hearts, not from the lips out, but from our heart that it will come, that we ask from Hashem that our children, grandchildren, everybody will do tshuva in front of God, in front of Hashem. That's what He wants from us, dear women. And I would like to continue. <laughs> and he still wanted to. <laughs> and you can see it all over, dear women. But that he died. And I need a, a more time with you. We won't finish okay. now. I have to. Things that you have to listen. Chavivin Yisrael shesivevan hakadosh baruch hu b'mitzvot tefillin b'rashel v'tefillin b'zorotel v'tzitzit b'raglehen. The children of Israel are loved by Hashem. So He gave them commandments. He gave them the tefillin on their hands, the tefillin on their head. He gave them tzitzit on their clothing. And He gave them mezuzah in the, in the doorway, dear women. King David says about it, Sheva bayom ilalticha al mishpatei tzidkecha. Seven times a day I'm praising your name because of your justice. What is this seven, dear women? It's in Perek Kuf Yotet Betilim, in chapter 119 Betilim. What is it seven times? Because that filling of hand is one, that filling of head is two, that tzitzit have four corners, together two plus four is six. And one mezuzah, seven. This is the seven mitzvot in order to protect us. This is the protection because when a soul comes to this world, the name of Hashem Shaddai is all over the soul. Shomer daltot Israel. He who keeps the doors of the children of Israel. Who protects the children of Israel. That's the mezuzah. So when a person transgresses, which means he made, makes a sin, the youth goes away. What is left is shed, demoned. That's what's left of the word. Only Shin Dalid. So there's a shed. And we spoke about it in Shema Yisrael, how we protect ourselves from this. Do you remember? Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Shema, it starts with Shin. And Echad, one, ends with Dalid. It's shed, a demon. So dear women, this is very important. The Tzitzit and the Tfilin and the Mezuzah protect us, dear women. And it says, dear Rabbi Meir says, אומר, מה נשתנה תכלת מכל ניני צבעונים? 
what is the difference? Why did Hashem distinguish the color, the light blue tchele that he wants on the tzitzit from all other colors, he says. This is from Adagmara, Masechet Menchot, Dear Women, it's page 43. It's written, Mipnei, Sha'at Chelet Domalayam, that Chelet resembles the ocean. Look, that Chelet, the blue, Doma Layam, resembles the ocean. We'll speak about it in a minute. Veyam Domela Rakia. And the ocean is like the rakia, heaven. is like the color of heaven, it says. Verakia le kiseh kavod. And heaven is like is the throne of Hashem, kiseh kavod. It's like the color of kiseh kavod. And it says over there, sheneemar, v'tachat raglav kemaase livnat asapir. Livnat sapphire. It's like a stone of sapphire. Sapphire has a... Um, Brilliance. Brilliance. Yes, it's like the color of a sapphire, dear women. Livna, sapphire is blue. Can livna a sapphire, like the color of sapphire, which is under the throne of Hashem. And why is it written like this? Why did Rabbi Meir write it like this? Why did he say that? So, dear women, we look at the sea. Why is it chelat? Hashem wants one, one of them to be one of the strings to be chelat to be blue because he wants us to remind us the ocean. Why the ocean? Why the sea? Because he wants us to remember the, the salvation that Hashem gave us when we went out of Egypt, because then we remember the splitting of the sea. So this is supposed to remind us the splitting of the sea. Harakia, dear women, the heaven is supposed to remind us when Hashem came on Ma'amad Har Sinai, on the mountain of Sinai, Beshavuot, dear women, Be'atzeret, to give us the Torah, dear women. And then we have Kisa Kavod to remind us, dear women, that has also Kelivnat, like sapphire, the color of sapphire. Why? Because the tablets, Aseret Adibot, that the stones themselves were made out of Livnat Asapir, were made out of sapphire. And then we remember by the tzitzit, by one string that is Tchelet, blue, we remember the opening of the sea for the children of Israel, because this is Hashem that saved us, and we're his children. And we remember heaven, that Hashem went down seven heavens in order to come to the mountain of Sinai and to give the Torah to the children of Israel. We remember the throne of Hashem, that the souls of the children of Israel come under the throne of Hashem. Be, and we remember, dear women, the, the tablets, Asher, the Ten Commandments that were written on the tablet, dear women, that they were, the, the stones themselves were sapphire, dear women. So look what it's supposed to remind us that it's it. I would like to give you, I would like to end. Huh? Kachol velavan, just like the tzitzit. It's true that the flag of the children of Israel is uh, is blue and white, just like the tzitzit. Seven, mm -hmm. seven strings that are white and one that is blue. Yeah, dear women, them again, David. Dear women, mm -hmm. and again, David has a lot of secrets in it. Yeah, all the aleph bet is inside the again, David. The again, David has all the aleph bet, but I won't go into it because I want to continue. Dear women. I would like to give you a story and I would like to give it to you from the Gemara. Okay. 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 Can I tell you I'm to you speak. Shh. Girls? Yes, yes. Pay attention. Oh, oh, toda. So I would like to give an example. It's, there's a story in the Gemara, a true story, dear women. Masechet Manchot, uh, page 44, and it's written like this. There was a, a story about a person, the true story, that was very careful with its tzitzit. He heard that there was a cheap woman that sells her body somewhere near the ocean. That takes 400 uh, pieces of gold uh, as a payment, dear women. A cheap isha zola. Bishara. She gerla arba meot zuvim. He sent her 400 coins of, uh, of gold. Vekavala zman. 
so she made an appointment with him. She gave us mano, ba v'yashav al petach. When its time came, the date came, the hour came, he went over there and he was sitting in the entrance of our home. Nichnesa shifchata, hamid, hamid came v'amrala. Oto adam she shiger lach dalet meot zuvim. This person that sent you four hundred gold coins. Bav Yosheva la Petach, he's sitting in the front of the house. Amrahi Yikanes. Let him come in, he says, she says. Nichnas et Sialo Zain Mitot Mitot. She prepared seven beds for him. Sheshel Kesef, six of gold. Vachat shel Zav, one of, it's, sorry, six of, um, no gold, silver. silver. Six of silver and one of gold. Uven kol achat v'achat sulam shel kesef, one above the other. The six were of gold, and between them there was a ladder of gold. But the seventh one, the top one, was of so again silver. six of silver, and and the ladders that were between each one of them was silver. But the seventh one was of gold, and the last ladder was also of gold. Ve'lonai tashel zav al tav yashval gabel yonak shei aruma. She went up to the seventh one, and she was uh, unclosed, naked. He also went up the, the seven ladders to sit, and he was unclosed too. The tzitzit that he took off came and slapped him. The, the, the strings of the tzitzit slapped him on his face. Nishmat. He fell down and he was sitting and we were sitting on the floor. She also went down she was she was telling him, she was swearing in the name of the Roman emperor that was in that time. I'm not leaving you you have to tell me what kind of defect did you find in me? What did you find? What faults did you find in me? Amarla, he's telling her. He says, "I'm telling you, I never saw a beautiful woman like you. Never saw in my life a beautiful woman like you." He says. Ela mitzvah achat zivanu Hashem elokenu. He says one mitzvah that Hashem, God, commanded us. Vetzitzit shma, and her name is Tzitzit. To put the Tzitzit. Uchtiv ba, ani Hashem elokechem shtei pamim. And twice Hashem mentions, I am Hashem your God. Twice he mentions it. He says, Ani hu shatid li para. I'm the one that going, I'm going to give you your punishment. And I'm the one that is going to give you your reward. Now the four can fought, the four sides are like four witnesses that are speaking against me. He says, those four can fought are now witnesses. He says, I'm not leaving you until you tell me your name. Where you live. Who is your rabbi, she says. What is your, your shiva's, the yeshiva's name, she says. That you'll study Torah over there. He wrote on a piece of paper his name, the city that he comes from, his rabbi's name, and the yeshiva that he comes from. And he gave it to her hand. Venatan biada. Amda vechilka, she went and sold all of her possessions. She was very rich. Third of them, Shlish, la malchut, gave to the government in order that they will allow her to, uh, to become Jewish, to convert. Veshlish la anim, third to poor people. Veshlish nat la beadain, third of it she took with her, with all of the linen and things that she put on that bed, those seven beds. She took, she took, more, she took everything with her. This she took with her, the linen and all the sheets and everything that she put on those specific beds that she prepared for him. And she came to the yeshiva, Beit Midrasho Shel Rabbi Chia, of Rabbi Chia. Amralo, Rabbi, she says, Rabbi, Tzave alai v'yasuni giyoret. Please, I would like to convert to Judaism. I want you to convert me to Judaism. Amar la biti, he says, my daughter. Says maybe you put your eyes on one of my students, on one of my scholars. He says, then I can't convert you. 
Because if you want to be converted, you have to, be, you have, to have the will for God. It's for Him you are doing it. He says, only for Him. She took the note that he wrote for her and she showed it to him. And she told him the whole story would happen. She says, I'm converting because I saw the power of your God. I saw the power of Hashem that the tzitzit came up and slapped him in the face, the strings. And he went down the beds, he fell from the beds, and he wouldn't touch me. So I said, if this can happen and a man can control himself with the help of God and not touch me, and I'm, I'm learned in this profession, she said, this is a powerful God. I have to convert, and this is the truth. So look what it says. <laughs> And he says, because of this, I know that she truly want to become Jewish. She truly want to convert yourself. So they help her to convert themselves. And then he said to her, and your merit will be that these beds that you uh, uh, sit out, no, you made them, the beds that you made in order to do a sin, now you're going to get married to the same person in order to do a mitzvah. And this is what happened. She converted to Judaism. She got married to him. And now she prepared the bed with the same linen and the same sheets in order to do the mitzvah of poor Woody women. It's like it, parallel to this is Rachav. You remember Yoshua when he wanted to conquer, when Hashem told him to conquer Yericho, the city of Yericho, in Eretz Canaan, in the land of Canaan, and he sent two spies, Kalev ben Yifune ve Pinchas, dear women, and Rahav was just the same, the, the same kind of profession she had. She, was, she used to entertain men, dear women. She converted to Judaism, and not only she converted, she became so righteous, she got married to Yoshua Navi, and he was the king of the children of Israel in that time. So look what Shuvah does, because a person who converts to himself to Judaism, and becomes, but truly wants to become orthodox conversion, truly wants to become Jewish, dear women, then Hashem gives him all the parts of the soul that the Jewish people have, that, because each Jewish person that comes to this world, each soul has all the parts that it needs in order to understand the whole Pardes, the whole Torah, including the secrets of the Torah. So it's like a baby that was just born, and he gets all the parts that were missing from his soul, dear women. This is a big merit. I would like to remind you, tell your husbands, your sons, what kind of merit is to put the tzitzit even to not lose your eyesight, dear women. There are, there are a lot of you saw the part of the secrets in the name of Hashem with all of the strings and the knots and everything that is in the tzitzit. It's a big merit to put a tzitzit. The tzitzit is parallel to the four, four judgments, four uh, executions of the Jewish court, dear women. We are going to continue with the judgment of the Jewish court and Nosavon, he who carries our transgressions. We are going to add all of this together. We are going to whipping. The next thing will be whipping. We are going to go through the Rambam, Mishneh Torah Rambam. We are going to go by the secrets. Why do we whip a whip person and, and how, much, how many times we do it and why we'll go through the secrets of the Torah. And then we're going to combine everything because Nosavon, he who carries our transgressions, goes back to Kain Vehevel. You'll see it in Kain Vehevel because everything that we have today is the fixing of the first family in the world, which is Adam and Eve. I would like to bless. Yes. Quickly, sorry. You said it was page 44, Masechet what? The Manchot. Manchot? Manchot. Mem nun chet vav tach. I would like to bless all of us, Bezrat Hashem. She gale mashiach to tell me my rabbi amen amen. She gave me the sar liyam na vizakhur la tov. Lo lamim parad adam mi chaverobit var la chayachid varabim ala chakera. I love you.